Lowering drug prices in the U.S. is an issue with rare bipartisan support. But how to do it remains the question. Many have introduced plans from President Trump to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and now a joint plan from three presidential hopefuls, U.S. Senators Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and Bernie Sanders. It's critical because we know so many millions of people across the country are struggling to afford the cost of prescription drugs because of the pricing. And right now, there are literally no controls on pharmaceutical manufacturers setting the price of drugs. The bill creates an independent agency that determines a list price, also called a sticker price, based on information provided by the drug manufacturer, like the cost of research and development, the cost of the drug in other countries, and the federal investment that supported development of the drug. The National Institute of Health, funded by the American taxpayers, really invests a great deal of money in spurring the innovation and the research to develop new drugs. This bill actually would require the transparency that would require manufacturers to disclose how much of those NIH funds are used in the development of the drugs. But the Healthcare Institute of New Jersey rejects that thinking. It represents pharmaceutical companies in New Jersey, a state that was once called the medicine chest of the nation. The bulk of the spending that's involved, which is in the billions of dollars, can take 12 to 15 years, and uh, with a huge risk of failure, is done by life sciences companies. He calls the plan unconstitutional because it allows the Bureau to remove a company's exclusivity to a drug if it fails to meet the pricing standards set by the Bureau, as Mike Erasmussen explains. It would actually give um, the government the ability to take away patents um, if uh, drug companies do not cooperate. Uh, other companies could go in and actually um, produce your gener generic versions of your drug. So it is about as aggressive as it gets. It would effectively introduce price controls and could completely undercut uh, the intellectual property that is the lifeblood of our industry, which is one of the pillars of our economy. Our companies would no longer be incentivized to invest in a very expensive, risky, and time-consuming enterprise. But Canada recently established a review board with a similar model. According to Senator Booker's press release, Canada paid 236 percent less for drugs in 2017 than it would have here in the U.S. Collins Grew says that's proof the model works. This in no way inhibits innovation. You know, innovation does no one any good and new drugs do, don't do us any good if people can't afford them. But will this plan gain any kind of bipartisan support? With the climate in the country today, political analysts say it's doubtful this plan, or frankly any plan, will move the needle much in either direction. In Newark, I'm Joanna Gagas, NJTV News.